Hi, my name is Grant Kramer, and I'm a professor emeritus at the University of Nevada, Reno. This video will continue my series on grape varietals. Today, we are continuing our grape varietal series with our third video on Cabernet Sauvignon. Cabernet Sauvignon is perhaps the most popular red grape and red wine in the world, and it is certainly one of my favorites. Cabernet Sauvignon was first identified in Bordeaux, France. Cabernet Sauvignon's parents were Cabernet Franc and Sauvignon Blanc from that region. And it was thought since there were no active breeding programs that this was a naturally occurring cross. In the early days, particularly, it was often mistaken for Cabernet Franc, which was its parent, and it has many common synonyms, some which include Cabernet Franc, Petit Cabernet, Vidur, Petit Vidur, Boucher, Petit Boucher, Boucher Sauvignon, Sauvignon Rouge, Verdeos Tintos. Some of the popular places where it grows is in southern France, in Italy, in Chile, in California, and in Washington State. Here's a map of the Bordeaux region. You would most likely find it along the left bank of the Gironde in the Medoc, Margot region, as well as in Pessac, Réunion, and the Graves region. Cabernet Sauvignon likes moderately warm climates with growing degree days of about 2,500 to 3,500. Warm days and cool nights are ideal. Napa Valley, I would say, is, is nearly an ideal location with the cool sea breezes coming in in the evening to cool down the fruit. In Bordeaux, where it is grown and well-renowned, it struggles many times to ripen in the Bordeaux's cooler climate, particularly in the fall, except on the left bank where it's grown on sandy soils. Too cool climate produces an herbaceous bell pepper character made from compounds called methoxypyrazines, which are indeed part of the green bell pepper. Also, if you have too warm a conditions, you get fruit that's lacking the varietal characters. We'll talk more about the fruit qualities in a little bit. In this picture on the right, you can see some 125 year old Cabernet Sauvignon vines that were in front of the Montes winery in Chile when I visited there. Cabernet Sauvignon is an extremely vigorous vine. It has prolific lateral shoots. Its leaves have five lobes with deep sinuses and serrated margins. Its clusters are small and often winged. And its blue-black berries are small and round with thick skins, making for good extraction of color and tannins out of the berries. It can produce six to seven tons on average per acre on flat fertile soils and three to four tons per acre on hillsides or shallow soils. It needs well-drained soils and is grown usually with a vertical shoot positioning system. It has mid to late bud break. It's mid to late ripening as well. On the right here, you can see the gravelly soils of the Graves region in the vineyard of Chateau Smith au Lafitte. Our production and quality in Northern Nevada is somewhat tainted in the sense that we used Clone 8 at our Valley Road Field Experiment Station. I chose Clone 8 because it was at the time the most popular Cabernet Sauvignon clone being grown. I did not know at the time that it was also considered a late maturing Cabernet Sauvignon vine. And therefore, the results that we have are due to this highly productive but late maturing clone. So our season range from May to the middle of October. We never got our Cabernet Sauvignon grapes ripe before October 15th. And often we would get frosts before that in the last week of September or the first week of October. So the fruit would never really fully ripen and it would have a green herbaceous character because that herbaceous character disappears, the methoxypyrazines disappear as the grape ripens more maturely. 
So earlier harvested grapes will have a greater amount of bell pepper character in it. The bricks generally was only up to about 22 for our well-watered vines, but when we drought stressed them, it accelerated the sugar development in our vines and we could get up to 24 bricks in some cases. The TAs range from 5.5 to 8, depending on the year. And it was clear that the fall frost season was our major limitation to fully ripening these grapes. They otherwise were doing well in the region. So the grapes rarely matured enough for good quality wines. However, other people, at least two other people that I know of, have grown Cabernet Sauvignon grapes in the area, in the Sparks region, and have produced very good Cabernet Sauvignon wines. And it appears that they were using some other clone because their grapes were getting ripe in the middle to end of September. So I don't know what their clone was, but more research is needed to investigate some earlier maturing Cabernet Sauvignon clones, and I think we could produce good quality grapes and certainly good quality wines. This picture on the right is from our vineyard with grapes that were at the, just after the Verazin stage. Okay, so what are the general characteristics of Cabernet Sauvignon wines? First of all, they tend to have a tannic character to them with a large number of complex phenolics, which are good for your heart, but they often are a little rough and harsh in an early developing wine, and they need to be aged to mellow them out, or they need to be blended with a softer wine, such as Merlot, to soften the aggressive tannins in those wines. It marries well with oak, which helps to soften the wine and add additional complexity. The fruit flavor descriptions for Cabernet Sauvignon are black currants, violets, blackberry, black cherry, which is one of my favorite characters of a good Cabernet from the Napa Valley, and green bell pepper. Green bell pepper, more often than not, is found in Australian Cabernet Sauvignons, and that is because they harvest the grapes a little bit earlier because that's the expected character and Cabernet Sauvignon for the local population there. They prefer it with a little bit of bell pepper. In the United States, we do not. It has a good, deep, dark color to the wine. It's responsive to water deficit, producing darker, richer, more tannic berries, and wine with more fruity aromas. The wines usually need aging or blending to soften and reduce the bitterness. So wine chemistry is complex, and I want to tell a little story. That's what this picture is here for, the Jack London Cabernet Sauvignon, because cabs are known to be aged a long time. Some say up to 100 years long. Does that mean your Cabernet Sauvignon can last that long? No, more than likely, it will last only about five years. It depends on how the wine was made and the grapes that were used. In this case, the story here with Kenwood and the Jack London Cabernet is they had a history in the past of making very intense Cabernet Sauvignons that were meant to be aged. What that meant was that if you were to drink it early, it would be very tannic and it would only develop, say, after about 10 years. Quite often, this is the style that the French do as well. And the story is that I bought in the, my early days about four bottles of this Jack London Cabernet because I could not afford to buy a whole case at that time. And I opened it up every three years after the first bottle. So in the beginning, when I opened them, they were very strong and tannic and, and not particularly palatable to me. However, by the last bottle, which was 10 years later, the tannins had dropped out of the wine and smoothed out to the point that now it revealed the beautiful fruit in the wine. And the fruit was like a young, fresh wine. Uh, I was very surprised. It was an eye-opening experience about how wines age over time, which was the purpose of why I was doing that. So today, most wineries do not make wines in this style. They produce wines to be drunk in a couple of years, and that many of them will not last more than five years. There are 
a smaller percentage of wines that will last longer than five years. So what contributes to that aging? One is thought to be tannins. So as I mentioned, these wines, the Kenwood wines were more tannic. The other is acidity. And it's thought somehow that this contributes to the aging of wine. What's clearly important is that oxygen is the enemy of our wine. And the more oxygen that gets in there, the more rapidly it will age. And so there are others that think that there are reductants in the wine that are acting as antioxidants and that these may be important, but these have yet to be identified what these compounds are. Another reason to why we add sulfur dioxide to wines is as an antioxidant to allow the wine to age longer. So there are quite a few clones of Cabernet Sauvignon in the Foundation Plant Services Registry. So they have 60 plus selections, registered selections for California, both from the French Entav clones to the Californian FPS clones from vineyards within California or from elsewhere. So in a study by Jim Wolpert, he had done a large study of about, mm, I don't remember exactly, 12 to 15 clones. So certainly not all 60 clones, but they were grown in a scientifically designed, experimentally designed plot, which allowed them to evaluate and compare the clones from all sorts of yield characteristics. And basically in terms of total amount of grapes that were produced or volume of grapes, it was found that the FPS clone 14 was greater than the FPS 8, which I mentioned was one of the, if not the most popular at the time. It had a greater yield than the 04 or the 02 clones. And those clones had greater yields than the 06 or the FPS 31 clone. The difference in yield was largely associated with the number of clusters on the vine and the number of berries per cluster. Most clones had similar sized berries. So in summary, Cabernet Sauvignon may produce high quality grapes and make good wines in Northern Nevada if an early ripening clone is identified and chosen. In my experience, it was not as good a variety as Merlot or Cabernet Franc. But we have done very little research and we certainly haven't investigated other clones. So more research is needed on this very important red varietal. It's mid to late season ripening makes it prone to frost damage in the fall in Northern Nevada, preventing it from reaching full maturity. So this is the biggest problem we have with Cabernet Sauvignon. And again, an earlier ripening clone could resolve this problem. It does have late bud break, which improves its ability to avoid the spring frost. It has bud break about a week after the very first varietals have broken, such as Chardonnay. And it has more fruit flavor, more color, and more tannins when it's exposed to moderate water deficits. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please like it because it helps bring attention to my videos for other people to see. And if you really like it, then subscribe to my channel and get more videos. Have a great day.